Hello, uh, I'm Richard Raffin. Uh, in this video, uh, I'm going through a few of the essential things every woodturner needs to understand about timber. So this is a brief intro uh, for novice turners and uh, probably for those who seem to forget some of these absolute basics. As you can see, this is a uh, a small tree, a shrub. I can't quite remember what it is now. Um, and I've cut it uh, really to sh illustrate um, the strength of a tree, which lies in the grain running this way. That's why a tree can bend in the wind and that kind of thing. So the length, the bit which has come out of the middle, that's incredibly difficult to break. Uh, with the best effort, I could probably break it uh, in two lengthways but I, I can't do that whereas the bit which I took off the end here which is the end grain really breaks very easily and here's a bit of maple which is uh, probably a bit stronger definitely a bit stronger but it still um, will break without uh, a huge amount of effort now that's one basic thing to bear in mind about uh, the strength of timber uh, that the long grain is always much stronger than the uh, the cross grain. So for anything long and thin, uh, like for instance a tool handle, uh, you mount that between the two centers and the grain is running along the handle. If this was cross grained here, uh, I'd probably be able to break it very easily. Wood mounted on the lathe between two points is called centre work or spindle work. Um, the grain needs to be as straight as possible uh, and near parallel to the lathe axis. The axis is the bit about which the lathe uh, is the, uh, the the line there around which the wood spins. Now the with the grain running this way you always want to cut from larger to smaller diameter. So. Uh, I'm going to go from there to there and the reason for that is that as I'm cutting this fibre here it's going to be supported by the bit below and so on. Whereas if I go the other way that's just going to break the wood out. So always come from larger to smaller diameter uh, when you're working between centres and the grain is running this direction. With any kind of centre work where the grain's running parallel to the lathe axis, remember the cuts are going to be from the larger to the smaller diameter. So you're going to be cutting across the grain. So the cuts here will be down that way and in that way. Um, obviously across the grain there and up here you'll be going down there. Now. If we have a piece of wood like this which is being used for a bowl, so we're now suddenly in the grain in this alignment, then the cuts here are from the smallest diameter up to the largest. So we're going that way and in from the rim there because if I go that way this end bit is likely to splinter off. Then we turn that round and start to hollow then the cut's going to come in this way and all the way around to the bottom. And of course when you start hollowing that means you probably have drilled a depth hole uh, and take a series of cuts in like that to the middle. There are several ways of doing that. So uh, a piece of wood like this, this is uh, a piece of pine was growing in the tree that way. Now let's have a look at that. So the strength is going to be here. Um, these are the growth rings, the annular rings, which are in this are fairly strong and you can see them on the end grain here. Now when wood dries out, you can see that there's a lot of kind of soft stuff in here and that's really what takes the moisture or holds the moisture in the wood. And as that dries out, that means this is going to shrink in its, uh, in its width. Uh, but the length, the hard bits here, um, they barely shrink at all. So the thing to remember about this is that uh, this bit will get narrower um, 
and with changes in the season it might even expand a bit whereas the length will stay pretty much the same. So this is a small log as you can see of uh, I think of some sort of fruit wood but it's very typical of what happens to a log as it dries out. Now this has been lying around for probably uh, a couple of months and you can see that the splits uh, all radiating towards the pith in the middle. Now, if you remember, I explained on this bit of wood that the, uh, the in the pulpy area here, that's what takes on the moisture, um, and as that dries out, the wood shrinks in diameter. Now, what happens here is, so the growth rings are going around here, there's more moisture in the outside rings than there is on the inside ones, Therefore, there's more shrinkage on the outside, which is why the logs split from the outside in towards the centre. Now, if you're lucky, you'll just get one big split as the whole log is shrinking around that. Um, in this case, splits are cut here so that you can see how the splits come down to the bottom. And uh, this log really is firewood unless you want very small pieces out of it. Uh, it really isn't worth bothering with um, because turning something like this is basically dangerous. Now this is a piece of silky oak uh, which was cut about six weeks ago. Um, it's got a big split up through the middle down that side but I know from uh, what I see on YouTube and elsewhere is that people cut a disc out of this and turn a bowl out of it um, and they spend an enormous amount of time filling these splits with epoxy and that kind of thing but basically turning something a blank like that is is dangerous it's likely to uh, fly apart especially if you turn the lathe on at too high a speed so with a, a, a log which is split like this you really want to take a look at where the splits are and the first cut here should be right down the middle to get rid of that central split. And I've made a number of videos on how to go around uh, cutting up logs so you get blanks which are safe to turn, basically. Uh, this has got other splits up the other side. Now this will probably be very good for things like spatulas. Uh, I could probably get two tool handles out of it, um, but not bowls, that's for sure. This blank was... Uh, sawn originally uh, for a bowl. Uh, this surface was flat as was this and it's a fine example of what a log does as it dries out. So this split um, might well have been there before the board was cut uh, at least uh, in embryo probably just couldn't be seen easily. The pith was somewhere up around here. This is a bay tree um, and as the growth rings, the wider growth rings out here, dried out, uh, that basically pulled the, pulled the log down, shrank it down that way. And so whenever uh, you cut a log through the pith, as it dries out, it's going to do that. Now we can see that on this log. has done the same thing, only to a lesser extent. Uh, this is uh, was cut as a, again as a, as a bowl blank uh, or a dish. Uh, there's a split up the middle here and you can just see the split coming down to here. Now, it hasn't moved quite so far, fairly dense grain here. Um, so when this gets cut, it's going to be cut down the middle and I'll get several blanks out of it. Uh, or I might get, if it works really nicely, I might even keep it for boxes. Uh, small end grain boxes. So if you're turning anything long and thin requiring strength you want the grain running parallel to the lathe axis. Um, same little pencil pots here, little mallet, bigger mallet, the grains running that way right the way through it. And if you turn a similar looking thing, uh, only this is cross grain, you can really expect it to warp somewhat, uh, which is what I wanted in this particular piece. 